This is the 2023 Miami Football National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special. Brought to you by Kemba Credit Union. Kemba, your trusted next door financial partner. And now, live from the Miami Sports Network studios at Yeager Stadium, here's the voice of the Red Hawks, Steve Baker. For the next uh, couple of hours, possibly, as we talk about the 21 new signees that will join the Miami Red Hawks football team, the defending MAC champions for the 2024 season. I'm Steve Baker, and happy to be joined by Miami head football coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, you know, we'll talk about the class. We'll talk a lot about the class over the uh, course of the next couple of hours. But uh, let's start by reviewing the past season. Obviously. The weather didn't cooperate. Uh, nothing cooperated on, sat on Saturday down in Florida for the uh, Cure Bowl, but uh, didn't take a thing away from this season. 11-3 and three on the season, wins over Cincinnati, Ohio, Ball State, and uh, a Mid-American Conference Championship. Uh, quite the special year for you and your staff and the players. Yeah, obviously fantastic year, um, especially after we started off 38-3 against Miami, Florida. Yeah. Um, then you win 11 of your next 12 games, and including all the victories that you alluded to that are special in and of themselves, just uh, beating OU special, beating Cincinnati special. Um, then obviously winning the MAC East and then having a second chance at Toledo. And then with the adversity, obviously you lose your starting quarterback in a gruesome way and um, team rally around AV and us finding ways to win games a little differently down the stretch than we had previously. Um, right down to the last, you know, unfortunately, we fumbled last in the Cure Bowl. Yeah. Um, ten fumbles in the game. We talked, you know, we knew all day, all week, like it's going to come down to who can hang on to the football. And we obviously made credit to them. They stripped it, but they made the last play. We were going to have first and ten on the 36. Everyone on, like, we were pretty certain we were winning the game. Just yeah. kind of was going to be a fitting way to end the year and uh, drive down and get a touchdown and win the game. So, did not end the way we wanted, but obviously a hard fought Cure Bowl. Our kids competed their tails off and obviously um, less than ideal conditions, <laughs> but I think they had a lot of fun. Like it was oh, yeah. kind of like Thanksgiving day. We're going to go out and play football in the backyard, the right? Stinks, but we're going to go <laughs> play with. So it was, it, it was, it was definitely a different game, but I think our kids enjoyed it, embraced it. And um, again, right up to that last, last play on offense, we, we, we thought we were winning that game. So um, accomplished a lot. So many contributors, like you talked so many times, Bake, this year. Yeah. It, it was the ultimate team. They played for each other. Everybody pitched in. You have, you know, a Groza. You have a national award winner, which is, you know, again, it's still hard for me to wrap my brain. You know, I was talking to Graham about, like, when you're 80, you're going to have that trophy oh, sitting yeah. on your mat. Like, and somebody said, hey, what's that trophy? Well, I was the national player of the year at my – like, it's just such a – such a again if you're at alabama georgia or Ohio state or michigan that's a hard accomplishment. Yeah. oh yeah you know you're talking about one in the whole country and um all the all-conference guys and all the the defensive recognition and the special teams recognition and uh rashad going over a thousand yards rusher in the last game and just mm -hmm. uh it, again it was a lot of fun the kids fought their tails off and worked their tails off and prepared their tails off and and really you know like we've talked like 11 wins it's Ben's last year 2003 13 and 1 that's the yeah. benchmark for 13 wins it's only happened once and then it's us 73 and 75 and we know how incredibly oh, phenomenal yeah, those absolutely. teams were and yeah. again I'm not even trying to compare ourselves to those teams I'm just saying it's nice to be in a sentence with the 73 and 75 teams of the only three 11 win teams in the history of this school yeah. and the great football history and all the great players and coaches and I said, you guys are getting mentioned with the 73 and 75 teams. That's that's pretty cool company yeah. to be even mentioned with. So just really proud of everyone. And the coaches did a phenomenal job. And everybody, everybody surround the program and um, looking forward to 2024. Those, those 70s teams would be proud of the fact of the defense that this team played, I'm telling you, because those guys could play some defense. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that still stands out to me. And, you know, in all of the MAC games combined, including the two games against Toledo, 86 points was given up and even in the bowl game you give up 13 points and uh it, it, it's just been 
you know, the, the old adage is defense travels, defense wins championships, and particularly given, you know, the fact that Brett went down, huge, hugest difference in the season this season was the defense. Yeah, and they just kept, we knew going in, we thought we had a chance to be really good. We led the league in defense a year ago, and you're, you're thinking that you got nine starters back, and we got to replace McWood and, and yeah. John Saunders, and we feel like Ty Wise can replace McWood, and he certainly did. Oh, yeah. Um, and then obviously Rayon comes through in a big, big way as a true freshman replacing John. And then you get Fridge back from his knee injury and he gets out. And then it's like Delaware State was kind of the low mark. It yeah. wasn't our best day defensively. <laughs> right. Uh, probably our worst day. Uh, and then we got in a conference play and they, they kind of made a statement at Kent State and, and, and held them to three points. And then it just kept building from there um, to where it just – went from good to great to then dominant, yeah. you know, and not yeah. even great. It was just every time they took the field, you thought something great was going to happen for Miami football, you right. know, and you didn't think they were going to score. And um, they kept turning up a notch right to the MAC championship game and, and an incredible performance against, again, it's one thing to do against some of the teams that aren't scoring as much in our league. It's another thing to do against Toledo, who is and has Penny Boone and Dequan right. Finn and all those yeah. great receivers and the All-American tight end and the best so lot. Like, they, they have a great, great offense, an explosive offense, and to hold them to 14 points, uh, pretty, pretty, and really 14 points in the last four quarters they four played them because they yeah. shut them out the second half of the first game. And then, so last six quarters, last like, six, hold, like yeah. pretty, pretty six incredible quarters for our defense. Um, and, and Coach Breakin, um and his staff on that side of the ball uh, deserves a lot of credit. The players obviously deserve all the credit, but, um, you know, turn the reins over to Coach Breakin this year and letting him have yeah. at it without me necessarily looking over his shoulder. Uh, and his first year really doing it, obviously record setting year and put up, you know, top 10 in the country and, and anybody watching just knew how well they were coached and how disciplined they were. And, you know, David Sale was talking about the championship weekend. He's sitting, and he's on the championship committee. So they're all watching it together. Right. And he's standing next to Jim Grobe, and Jim Grobe has just marveled at how disciplined our, our team is, but particularly our defense, and how they're always in the right spot. And they're all, you know, and you're talking about that's Jim Grobe, and you're like, okay, this is a guy that knows, you he know, knows a little so bit when about you get, it. Yeah. When you get complimented from people like that, and then, um, and anybody who watches just knew how well they played and how disciplined they were. So just a, just a phenomenal year. And obviously we used them all year, but down the stretch, we really relied on them heavily. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, as you, you went through the year, you win the championship. And uh, the following Monday, the portal opens up. And, and you and I have talked about it. You knew Avion was going to the portal. And I think a couple of other guys did too. But uh, almost immediately uh, in this day of, of kids going and, and looking for whatever they're looking for, the guys on this team all said, hey, we got one, we want two, we're coming back. And, you know, I, I think that's a, that's a huge tribute, number one, to how much of a team this is, but that is the culture that you and your coaching staff have built here. And uh, you and I talk about building a program all the time as opposed to a team. And, you know, that's, what, that's the kind of thing that I love to see. Yeah, no, it was, it was obviously caught a lot of buzz. Everybody was yeah. talking about, you know, a lot of our kids immediately said they're going to come back and we're going to run this thing back and we're going to do this again. And um, it certainly is a testament to our team, our program, our staff, um, our kids. We bring in kids. And, and then I think it gets missed or maybe it doesn't get missed, but just how we tie into our school. Right. And, and the, it, it's more than just come here and play football. And – the amazing thing is all 90% of the kids come back there and have a degree. Some already have masters from here. Mm -hmm. So they're not mm -hmm. even, they're not even staying because of the education. Like they're, they're just staying to play football at this point. And, but we found kids that really like being here, not just being part of Miami football down this hill at the, at the Gunlock center and at the Dow indoor sports center, but they like being, we found kids that fit at Miami, you know, right. and the whole, we were talking about graduating champions. That's what our kids do. Like, that's our athletic mantra, graduating champs. Well, if you, if you think of graduating champs, you're going to see the pictures of the Miami football players in that picture. Like, that's right. what they are. They're, they're, they're champions on the field. They're champions off the field. And, that's, and then you think about love and honor, and that's, that's my kids. Like, they, they embrace the whole – everything that the university tries to be and everything that our athletic department tries to be, we think we're a great um, 
whatever you call it, like representative, yeah, representative, representative of, of what this university and what this athletic program are trying to be. So finding the right kids for the right fit, and doesn't mean that our fit is better. Like we always talk about recruiting, like Miami's different. Yeah. We're different. I'm different. We all have how we run our programs. Finding the kids that buy into what we're doing, we've certainly found that, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, having, having kids resoundingly say they want to be back in a day and age where no one wants to be back. And again, kids change their mind. That's today. Knock on yeah. wood. Kids leave yeah. tomorrow. But um, the fact that they're even considering coming back, a lot of these kids is, 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 is awesome to us. And, and, and they want to play with their teammates and they want to play for this staff and they want to play for another MAC championship and they want to have another chance to battle for the victory bell and they want another shot at OU and they want to, you know, another shot at, shot at, shout, shot at whatever power five teams yeah. await and wh what, what we can accomplish moving forward so it's it's you know how much i enjoy it. you see me like being around these kids oh, and coaches absolutely. it's it's an amazing group of people it really is and you know and it, it translates on the road as well because you know last week we spend tuesday through saturday in orlando and i know you heard it uh me as a radio announcer just walking around heard it uh you know from people that were you know in the hotel in the park and that sort of stuff just you know raving about the team and how they conduct themselves, how they handle themselves, uh, and uh, to the point where it was like uh, I had people saying, "That's not the norm right. at, the, at, the, at a bowl game. It, it's really not." Yeah, in the humility of our guys. Yeah, exactly. They're they just coming off a monster year and a great where they should feel great about oh, themselves. Oh yeah, They absolutely. should be walking out their chest out, and they do. They're very prideful, but just they don't walk around like they own any place. They, right. they treat people like you would want they. They treat other people like they treat their own family members and yeah. how they would want family members to treat them. And so it doesn't matter whether it's at Universal, whether it's at a hotel, um, when we're traveling to high schools for practices, they're just awesome young people and, yeah. and they treat everybody the right way and they clean up after themselves and they're always respectful and they're always appreciative of anything that comes away. Any, you know, they're very appreciative of the opportunities down in Orlando right. and they're not always used to at the bowl there's a lot of you know you're a division one athlete and you you live in this yeah. world of social media and you're all that and you you can get caught up in that pretty easy yeah and even even good people can get caught up in that and sometimes go a little bit down a path of that the world owes me and you're mm -hmm. lucky to have me here and yeah. our kids and again that's a tribute to to our coaching staff of how they conduct their rooms and Again, we're very, very competitive and we're very prideful and we, we don't want to take a backseat to anyone, but that's in football. Yeah. In life, we just want to be, we want you to treat us good and we want to treat you good. And we want, if, if we need job. help, we'd like you to help us. But if you need help, we got no issues helping you guys. So it's totally yeah. different for, and again, that fits Miami. Like I talked about the love and honor. Yeah. We represent that everywhere we go. Yeah, I'm Steve Baker, and again, this is head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, the 2023 National Signing Day uh, basically in the books yeah. for Kinda you. Kind of closes a chapter Yeah, for I was going to say. Like, it, 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 I was know. talking to a quarterback for about an hour and a half last night in the next class. Yeah. And I was like, we're, we're tomorrow morning. Starting, we're, start rolling, right? Tomorrow morning we're turning the page and we're trying to get him to commit. And, um, you know, it's, it's just weird because I really don't want to close 2023. You know what I mean? It was, 2023 was pretty pretty darn good year. So yes. um, we're excited about 2024. But this, this signing this morning kind of really – for the most part closes 2023 down because the 2024 recruiting class, which this is yeah. the spring of 24 is part of your 23 work and things we've been working on for a couple of years. So we're, I will say this up front. We've obviously done a good job recruiting since we've gotten here. Obviously we were really bad when we got here and we couldn't beat anybody to right. where we are today. It's so does it take good coaching? Yes. Does it take a good culture? Yes. It's all, there's a lot of factors we know, but the most thing takes talent. Yeah, we have really good players. You you get to call the game and you watch a bunch oh. of really good players make yeah. plays, you know. And again, is coaching involved in that? Yeah, but Frizz McKee's a great player. You know what I mean, and he when the ball's in here, Frizz finds a ways to go. You know what I mean, so this is as important as anything we do, and it's all important. But we just had our our official visit, you know, sandwiched in there yeah. between the MAC championship and the bowl game. We had an official visit weekend. It's been a busy time and a wonderful time. Uh, and this is the biggest, longest, strongest, most explosive class we've had in 10 years. It, it, was, it was evident um, just watching and watching their highlights and watching them move around. It's, it's a pretty amazing group. Um, 
from the time that a lot of them committed last spring and last summer to some of the kids that we just got committed last weekend, it's they were looking at each other thinking, wow, there's like, I thought I was kind of the big cheese in my oh, school. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody around me looks just like me and is explosive like me. So it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a special group and a group we're really excited about. We will talk about the 2023 class. We'll start announcing those names and talking about the players. When we come back in just a few seconds, stay with, with us. This is the 2023 Miami Football National Signing Day Special. We are Kemba. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our passion is to fuel your dreams for today and tomorrow. A loan for your car or first home. Financial support to grow your small business. Saving for life's big moments. Insights to help you plan for a brighter financial future. Kemba, your trusted next door financial partner. Learn more at Kemba.com. That's K-E-M-B-A dot com. The 2023 Miami Football Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kemba Credit Union. Kemba, your trusted next door financial partner. And now, more of the show. Like we'll we'll just have term. it'll be a quick fix. We'll we'll find a way to get a bunch of good players and transfers in here, and it'll be a quick fix. But then when that group's gone, we'll be right back to where we were. Or do you want a program that will last the test of time, and we can be really good in the Mid American Conference year after year after year? If we if you do it that way, you better have a great nucleus of high school kids. Yeah. And the heart and soul of our football team is high school kids. A defensive player of the year is a high school kid from Akron Hove and Matt Salopek. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. He's, and again, we've done good in the portal to him. We're, we're certainly taking kids out of the portal that have been huge impacts for the sure. team. But we, the glue of our team, the heartbeat of our team are, are those kids. And that, that way we can bring these other kids in, the Ty Wise of the world, and they join that group and become part of that group. They're not, we're not looking for, you know, hard mercenaries that are going to come mm -hmm. in. It's all about me. Right. They, they suck these kids in and they fall in love with playing football for Miami University and playing for Miami University. And we're pretty specific when we recruit kids that we still want to have a program here. We're not yeah. just looking for what about me. And I know kids move on. I know kids get in the portal. I know kids make those decisions. And I totally understand those decisions. Um, but for the high school kids, they're just more good players. And I think we latched on to a bunch of them. Yeah, indeed. And we'll start with the offensive skill positions. And we'll start at quarterback, an early enrollee from Indianapolis, Indiana, Ben Davis High School, 6'1", 190 pound quarterback. Thomas Gutkowski, tell us about him, Coach. Yeah, Thomas, obviously start with this is they won the state championship, had probably one of the best state championships runs you'll ever had. They beat Brownsburg in the first round, who was number one in the state. Um, then they beat Cathedral, who's always one of the top programs in the state of Indianapolis. Then they beat Center Grove, who's always one of the top uh, teams. And then they went on to win the state title. And all those games are knockdown dragouts. They trailed in three of their first four playoff games, and he led them to winning touchdown drives at the end of the game. He can throw it. He can run it. Um, he's absolutely fearless. 
Uh, he can make every throw. We've seen him throw live at camps from since his sophomore year on. Um, he played uh, for Coach Simmons uh, up until his senior year, until we hired Coach Simmons away from Ben Davis. Um, but he is, he's got a lot of Brett Favre, and he is the ultimate gunslinger, and he, there is no chance he ever backs down in any situation. And he put up really, really gaudy numbers on a great, great football oh, yeah. team. Talk about gaudy numbers. His junior and senior year combined 5,100 yards and 57 touchdowns for the two years for Thomas Gotkowski. 6'1", 190 pound quarterback from Indianapolis, Indiana. An early enrollee, meaning he'll be here next month and uh, ready to uh, step into spring ball. Five of those on this class of 21. Yeah, excited about all the early enrollees, obviously, and them getting a, you know, getting a leg up academically. They're one semester ahead of everybody else academically, and then obviously getting a leg up and uh, being here for spring ball. Obviously, Rayon Strader was here for spring ball. is a big, big benefit oh, to him, yeah. but also a big benefit to Miami football. So, uh, especially with, with Brett's situation that he'll be, he's gonna be getting cleared around that time, but probably not taking a bunch of team reps. It'll be an opportunity for Thomas to come in here and soak up some of those reps and, and get a head start on his college career. Next up, we head just uh, down the highway, if you will, to Lawrenceburg, Indiana, East Central High School, another early enrollee. Lawrenceburg, Indiana native, 6'1", 195 pound running back, Josh Ringer. Yeah, amazing thing with Josh, two time state champions, Mr. Football in the state of Indiana. Um, 60 touchdowns this year. Yeah. Not 60 touchdowns, great scored 60 touchdowns this year. He had 118 touchdowns in his high school career. Um, which I can't even put my brain around those numbers. <laughs> um, over 6,000 yards in his high school career, um, which again, I can't even fathom. You get to 3,000 yards in your high school career and it's, it's yeah, you're one of the all-time great greats. One, yeah. so he had he 6,000 yards. He's a great, great receiver also. He can really catch the ball out of the backfield. And honestly, when we first got his commitment, we got him committed as a safety. Yeah. Um, because he's that versatile and he doesn't play a ton on defense because when you're scoring 118 touchdowns, they like to save you for offense. Um, but he is a big, long, athletic. We thought he could be like a Sterling Weatherford at safety position. Yeah. And we still believe that. Um, so he gives us tons of versatility on either side of the ball. And you ask him where he wants to play. Usually the guy that scores 60 touchdowns wants to play offense. He's like, eh, I don't really care, coach. <laughs> Ask about he's probably the most humble kid I've been around. I said, hey, tell me about, uh, you know, getting that Mr. Football award. Oh, That's yeah, kind absolutely. Of big, kind of a big deal, right? And he's yeah. like, yeah, it's pretty cool. We got to get out of class. <laughs> I'm like, so, so you win Mr. Football, and it was cool because you got out of third period, whatever, yeah, physics yeah, or whatever exactly. it was. So he is one of the most talented young men and uh, comes from a great, great program, obviously, back to back state championships. And. Uh, Mr. Football and say it's his accolades just go on and on and they're so rich yeah. and deserving. We're very excited to have him in our program. Yeah, indeed. That's Josh Ringer, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Another, East Central, another early enrollee. Yeah, also. East Central High School uh, is coming to Miami. Up next, another running back. This one out of Cleveland, Ohio, Glenview, Glenville High School, excuse me. 5'10", 230 pound running back to Shante Jones. Yeah, Deshante's a grown man, uh, big, strong, physical back. Glenville wins the state title um, and won the state title in 22, won the state title again this year in 23, had 161 yards and a touchdown in the state title game, probably his best game of the year. He went down to IMG, and IMG is obviously very good, and yeah. he ran and ran and ran and ran and played linebacker against IMG. Um, 1,600 yards and 26 touchdowns this year. Um, First team all state in Ohio as a as a junior and a senior. Um, play plays at Glenville Academy for Coach Ginn and uh, they always have tons and tons of great players. Mm -hmm. So he is he is a big physical back and he's a north and south guy and he's got incredibly, incredibly strong, very hard to bring down, and we're very excited to add add Deshante Jones to our to our running back room. Impressive uh, running and again coached by Ted Ginn Sr at Glenville High School. Up next, another running back out of Columbus, Ohio, Marion Franklin High School, 6'2", 225 pound, Tito Glass Jr. Yeah, Tito's another very versatile young man, plays defense, tremendous defensive player, um, almost looks too big to be a tailback, but he is not. Uh, he, he can really run with the football. 
uh, plays both ways, does everything, can catch the ball. He's a kid like we, you know, you talk about Dom Robinson. Like mm -hmm. he could play running back, he could play tight end, he could play linebacker, he could probably play defensive end. He is just a big, strong horse, and he is, but he's, but he's a skill guy. Like he, he plays like a skill guy. As you'll see here. He his highlight film is so versatile. Like anything they ask him to do, and they ask him to do a lot, he could do. Um, he can run, he can catch it, he can tackle, he can run over, he can mm -hmm. run by you. Um, so uh, big, strong, athletic guy. Uh, where he ends up here, could he be Could he be the tailback? Could he be the Mike? Yeah, he could be all of it. Um, mm. And he did all of it in high school. And he, he, like Josh, really doesn't care. He just likes to play. And uh, as you see, really adept at catching the ball with most kids that are 240 pounds don't have those ball yeah. skills. Uh, so we're just uh, really, really excited. Uh, Coach Simmons and Coach Wells, uh, Coach Patton all did a great job getting a kid out of Columbus, Marion Franklin, that – he is a special, special athlete. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that we haven't mentioned, uh, we've talked about four athletes here already, and all four of them at least a team captain, three of the four two-time team captains, and that's one of the things that we talk about every year in, uh, when you're looking at players and recruiting players, you want that leadership in addition to the skill. Yeah, and again, it's why we, you talk about our program is the way our program is, because yeah. we get quality kids, and it's important to us. It's important to get the talent, because if you don't have the talent, you don't have a chance. But Aside from the talent, we're looking for the right kids from the right families. And we always say there's less old school families out there, but we're still looking for them. You know? <laughs> yeah. So one of the standard recruiting questions at Miami is, has your mom and dad ever yelled at you? Yeah. And if they look at me like they've never been yelled at, this probably isn't the place for them. You know? no. Most, if they look right at mom and dad and start laughing like, yeah, coach, I've been there. I'm like, okay, we're good. We're, we're good. good. We're, we're going to be all right uh, together. And one other skill position player to tell you about. And we head to the state of Michigan. This is a Bra Braylon Isom. Braylon Isom. A 6'3", 195 pound wide receiver from Saginaw, Michigan Heritage High School. Yes, yeah, Saginaw Heritage Braylon is a tremendous, as you're going to watch this tape, incredibly gifted athlete. Um, made the dream team, the All State team, Detroit Free Press dream team. He's big, strong, he's fast, he's a great basketball player. He basically, they throw the ball up to him, he catches everything. Um, doesn't matter, he can twist, torque, jump, you name it. He's got incredible vertical. He's the all-time touchdown reception leader in the history of the state of Michigan with 52 career touchdown yeah. catches. He's in the top five in, in, in receptions and total yards in the history. He had 1,400 yards this year and 18 touchdowns as a junior. Then he backed it up with another incredible senior year. So he's also fast. He also can run after the catch. And he's big. He's strong. Um, he's the kid that you talk about that, hey, how has the portal affected high school players like this, this is a kid that we are very fortunate to have. And again, a lot of these kids, credit to our staff and our program that schools came, you know, Braylon's family say, yeah, mm -hmm. so-and-so's calling him nightly now, but he's telling him he's, he's yeah. good with Miami. So not just kids not entering the portal that could have entered the portal, but high school kids that could have jumped ship late, late mm -hmm. here in the sign because of the monster careers that they've had. Um, Amazingly that they stuck with us and want to come yeah. to Miami and be part of this. Braylon Isom, wide receiver out of Saginaw, Michigan. Those are the offensive skill positions. We'll come back in just a moment and continue with our discussion of the 2023 class uh, for National Signing Day on our special. But first, we'll take a break. here. Miami men's basketball returns to the Millette Hall Hardwood this Friday at 1 o'clock as they host the Catamounts of Vermont. It's Kids Day Out with Miami Basketball. For only $11, you get one adult ticket and two youth tickets. The kids are off school, looking for stuff to do. Make sure you head to Millette Hall this Friday at 1 o'clock for Kids Day Out with Miami Basketball versus Vermont. And remember to follow Miami Men's Basketball everywhere. Simply use the TuneIn app to hear every Miami men's basketball game from the Miami Sports Network. The 2023 Miami Football Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And now, more of the show. Back at our Yeager Stadium studios, the 2023 National Signing Day Special a special class uh, awaiting the Miami Red Hawks, uh, four or five, excuse me, early enrollees out of the 21 names uh, that we'll be talking about here today. And uh, the rest will, of course, be here 
in the fall and ready to go as uh, we're rejoined by head coach Chuck Martin. And uh, up front, the O-line and tight ends, uh, this was a group that, uh, you know, all season long just kept getting better and better. The running game uh, for Miami uh, got better and better and uh, looks like uh, you've just added a lot to uh, the, uh, the depth chart on both of those sides for the tight end and O-line coach. Yeah, uh, excited about, we got all these old linemen coming back, everybody besides Ben Jackson's coming back yeah. and the growth and then obviously having a thousand yard rusher for the first time in a long time and then our ability to run the ball, like we obviously leaned on the running game. The saddest part of the bowl game is we ran the ball up and down the field. Right. It's our tailbacks average 5.6 yards per carry. We just could not hold on to the football to get the ball in the end zone. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, against a good run defense, um, we kept getting better and better and better. And uh, we're adding some really nice tight end pieces. We need some depth in the tight end room for sure. There's right. going to be some opportunities for those young guys to come in and compete. And then we're adding some nice depth into the to the O-line room also. Well, let's start with the tight end and we'll head down south. Marietta, Georgia, another early enrollee. 6'1", 225 pound tight end, Hunter Teal. Yeah, Hunter is just a tremendous football player and he, he's a kid without a position he's not really tall enough for the big guys want him at tight end he's you know no one really plays the fullback he's a tremendous route runner and receiver he's got great hands and he's fast and he's 240 pounds um and and we've loved him from the time we looked at him he was first team all state as a junior and a senior in the state of georgia that's hard to be first team all state Mm -hmm. he was the only junior on the first team all state team a year ago there's one junior was hunter teal uh, plays in one of the top programs. They end up losing in the state title a week ago on uh, uh, right after our bowl game. They played in the state title and, uh, and ended up losing. It was their only loss of the year. They're a tremendously gifted program that plays great people. He's their all-time leading receiver in, in school history. Um, and it's hard because they got a lot of Division One athletes at the skill positions to carve out a niche there. But just had a monster year. Great family. Great kid. Um, the, the coach there knows what a Division One player looks like, what a Power Five, and he was like, when we called an offer, he's saying, thank God somebody sees how good this kid is because I don't get it. He is a dominant player on the dominant program in the dominant state in the country, and he, he can do a little bit of everything. He can run, he can catch, he can block. So he, he's a, just a great football player, and we're excited. He's an early enrollee, and he's going to get yeah. in and get a bunch of reps this spring. Great uh, speed on that uh, highlight tape as well. The Marietta, Georgia native Hunter Teal, at tight end. Another tight end from Indianapolis, Indiana. Cathedral High School, another great program in Indianapolis. And a 6'6", 235-pound tight end in Zach Meeks. Yeah, Zach plays for Coach Peebles at uh, Cathedral. And again, year in, year out, one of the best programs. He has all the size and the measurables. Uh, he, is a, he is a really, really great high school player with even a bigger upside. He is mm -hmm. still, every time I see him, he's just bigger and heavier <laughs> and, and he's faster. He's got great hands, he's got great length. He's, will, he's a willing blocker. As he continues to get stronger and stronger, he, he's got a chance to be a, a really dominant player in this league um, and, and has played high level. Ended up losing to Ben Davis in, in the last, last seconds on a last second drive led by Thomas. Uh, but it was fun to watch two of our recruits yeah. on two of the best schools in the state of Indiana compete uh, in the state playoffs. So uh, just just really good at everything. Plays on a great team, um, really well coached. Uh, dad dad played for Coach Knight uh, in the Indiana Hoosiers and yeah. uh, uh, pretty good lineage there. So he, he knows exactly what it takes. But he's a late blooming kid. To me, he was kind of the steal of the draft where he just – He's, 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 he's got some special talents and we're really excited. Made it to the Indiana Dream Team, top yeah. 50 players in the state of Indiana. And um, again, we, we, we are really excited about him and Hunter coming at the tight end positions. Yeah, 30 catches for 400 yards and three touchdowns as a junior. Followed that up his senior year with 40 catches, 400 yards and nine touchdowns as a senior. Those are the two tight ends in this year's uh, signing class. Let's move to the offensive line and down I-75 to Richmond, Kentucky we go to Madison Central High School, 6'5", 280 pound out of Richmond, Kentucky, Aiden Howard. Yeah, Aiden, really like Aiden. Aiden, we were trying to figure out, um, we start his recruitment a little bit later and trying to figure out, we were trying to decide and the, the cool thing about Aiden, he came to camp um, in our, one of our summer camps and did it the old fashioned way, earned a scholarship like Coach Bag, Coach Wallace, myself, 
everybody loved him at camp. And he came to camp to get, like, when we offered him at the end of camp, he's like, that's what I came here to do today, Coach. And that's how it used to be. Yeah. Everybody went to camp to get – it's not nearly the, the way it is. But he is, he is a late bloomer kid. He continues to get bigger and stronger every day. He's really athletic. He really likes to put his face on people and block people, which is prerequisite number one at O-line. Um, really smart kid. Uh, just excited to add him to our program. He fits exactly what we're trying to do up front. He has the athleticism to move around, um, but is going to have the size and strength and toughness to move people inside. Two-time team captain as well for uh, Coach William Blair at Madison Central down in Richmond, Kentucky. Earned second team All-State as a junior and was named the team's offensive MVP. Aiden Howard out of Richmond, Kentucky. Up to Columbus we go once again. Dublin, Ohio to be exact. Dublin Kaufman High School. 6'3", 250-pound offensive lineman Chris Manu. Yeah, coached by Coach Stokes. They had a fantastic year this year. Chris plays both ways, and he's very violent, and he loves to play, as you can see right there. He is he has played more O-line by trait, um, but they played him more and more on defense, and he had a dominant year defensively this year. He hadn't played a ton of defense. He likes to stick and stay on blocks, as you'll see here, as he's knocking people over the water cooler. <laughs> um, Undersized, he's another one that gets caught up in the whole position thing like Hunter Teal. Um, I think he's another steal of the draft because he is a little bit undersized and everybody's like too small for being old lineman. Is he true D lineman? Don't know. Uh, we just love him. He's a great student from a great high school in Dublin, Kaufman. He's a great player from a great program. He's strong. He's violent. He plays the game the right way. And we just told him well, we're going to figure it out when he get here. Yeah. I think he has NFL upside at offensive center. He played tackle for them obviously in high school, but his his length and size fits more, and he's super smart. And he's got a great ability to communicate, which is what you need at the center position. So I think that's kind of where we're going to start him. But he, like, you know, like we talked with Tito Glass and Josh Rink, we just have a lot of flex. There's a lot of great players that can do a lot of jobs on the football field. Yeah, indeed. Again, a two-time team captain and uh, first team All-State as a senior, Chris Manu of Dublin, Ohio. And uh, local, local high school, elder high school, a uh, great program as always, Doug Ramsey, the head coach there, and you get a good one here. 6'6", 295-pound offensive lineman, Jacob Schorsch. Yeah, Jacob's a great player from Coach Ramsey and Elder have been one of the top programs, not in the state of Ohio, but in the Midwest for years. They do such a tremendous job with their kids, and you're going to get more of a finished product coming out of Elder. They're just, they're so well coached. It's, you're not starting from scratch with a raw piece of clay. You're starting with a guy that's really been coached. Jacob's violent. Um, he's physical. He loves to play. Um, again, he is definitely one of the steals of the draft for us. Like he's he's a guy we had on our, our eye on early. Coach Patton did a tremendous job developing a relationship with Jacob, and um, they play a very physical brand of ball at Elder, which oh, suits yeah. exactly. Jacob's a kid I think can get in the mix here uh, uh, very early, and he had a lot of suitors pushing on him and his belief in us and Coach Patton and Miami football and. Um, he said it best after we beat UC. He goes, now I can tell a lot of people go pound sand and I'm going to Miami. <laughs> so uh, we love Jacob. He's, he's definitely a West Sider. Um, and it, like I said, anytime you can get a kid from Elder that's Coach Ramsey's coach, you're going to get a kid that knows what it takes. Like there's always adjustment at college. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jacob's adjustments, come around. They, they lift weights there and they lift weights like a college pro. They, they practice like a college pro. They, their, their intent is what we are. And then the expectations are so high they're playing in. The, the GCL with, with Moeller and LaSalle and Axe, it just, it's a bloodbath. That non-league, they play the best teams in the country because they can't, those teams. So he's played in so many big games and big moments already. Yes, there'll be an adjustment coming to college, but like I said, getting a kid from Elder, the adjustment will be a lot quicker. Yeah, it will be indeed. And uh, again, he was uh, all-conference as a senior, first team, and named his conference's Offensive Lineman of the Year, uh, named first team yeah. All-Ohio, All-Southwest Ohio, and All-City as a senior as well, Jacob Schorsch from Cincinnati, Ohio. And that is the tight ends and offensive line. We move to the defense and we'll talk about the linebackers and more when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us, the 2023 Miami Football National Signing Day Special. We are Kemba. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our passion is to fuel your dreams for today and tomorrow, a loan for your car or first home financial support to grow your small business, saving for life's big moments, insights to help you plan for a brighter financial future. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. 
Learn more at Kemba.com. That's K-E-M-B-A dot com. You caught me. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Just hydrating. We're supposed yeah, to hydrate. It's hydrating, it's right? very important. Uh, and we are back here we on our want, 2023. We don't, to, we don't want the show to drift downhill because we're not hydrating. Oh, exactly. So. Exactly. And uh, we're here at our Yeager Stadium studios. And uh, Coach, uh, this this 23 class, we've talked uh, about the offensive side. We'll get to the defense in a moment. But, you know, in, in talking recruiting, and you and I have talked about it, but, you know, in trying to put together a class that starts, I mean, you said it, you start tomorrow on the 2024 class. And knowing the unknowns that lie ahead, how was it in, in putting together this class and what were you looking for, uh, not only position-wise, but we talked about player-wise as well, uh, the type of player that you look for? Yeah, we try to recruit every position every year, so I'm not a big board guy. Like I say, our driver says, everybody's got the recruiting board, we're gonna take this. I'm looking for great players who are great people, who are great competitors who wanna do extra, you know, and that's, so you just keep bringing me guys like that. We'll probably end up taking them. We'll figure it out as we go. We're also always looking for that versatility because if you have the, the Dom Robinson versatility, it's going to work out. Like, and right. again, sometimes it works out for the player because he tries position. It's not going great, and you slide him someplace else. Sometimes it works out for the team where he, he's actually doing okay at a position like Dom was doing fine, but you have a need, and you plug him into that need, and it benefits him and benefits the whole team. So we're always looking for versatile guys, whether it be a – a linebacker we think can play DN, whether it be a running back we think can play linebacker, whether it be a running back we think can play receiver, you know, uh, a corner that we think can play safety, you know. So we're always looking for versatility. And not everybody in this class, there's some guys that we pretty sure. much know we're going to plug them in that position. That's what they are. Yeah. Thomas Kutowski is going to be a quarterback. Right. There's no not, there's no ideas that he's going to move another. But there's other guys that have played multiple positions at high school <laughs> at a very, very high level. Yeah. And so you know you have that flexibility based on the uncertainties of college football today uh, with, with the transfer rules. Um, it's hard to forecast long term. You try, but you used to could do it with, with some level of certainty. Yeah. Now it's just you wait to the end of the year, you wait to the end of spring, you're always adjusting on the fly. Yeah. We've been able to do a very good job of that because we just don't worry about the, the ups and downs. We just move forward. Like, yeah. you know, you lose, you lose a good player, you try to find a new one. Like, that's yeah. what you try to do. There's, and we've lost some great players via the portal, great kids that are great representatives of who we try to be, but we've also replaced them with the same kid and sometimes yeah. even a better yeah, kid. Better kid. So, yeah. um, I would say you're always trying to get better and it's no different. So, but like we said, the heart, heartbeat of our football team, the backbone of our football team is going to be these high school kids that, that stick with us like, like Salopec for six years. And, yeah. um, and if you build it that way, you can keep – you can keep a program, not just have a one-year team, which a lot of teams are already into the one-year team. 35 transfers, and they're, yeah. they're bragging about them, like, wait till next year. Oh, yeah. Wait yeah. till next year. It might have worked this year. It might not have worked this year. Have it help you if it didn't work this year, because mm -hmm. then you have nothing next year. But even if it does work this year, you're not building a program, and it is hard these days to have a program. We talked about all year. Yeah. Our thing to be in 23 as a team, but we're going to try to keep going in that direction. Well, and, and that, that to me, it, it is the hardest thing in the world because if you know you you lose some players, whatever, uh, if, if if you're building on that, I just don't, you know, it's it's all for the kids. I get it, but you know, it is it is so difficult to try. I mean, do you go back to the portal for 35 more kids the next right. year? I mean, uh, that that's where it really becomes yep. difficult. And, and once you start that cycle, it's hard to get out of. Oh yeah, because you don't have young guys you're developing. Right. So we're trying to we're trying to I talk about the happy mix. You know. Oh yeah. Have that have 70, 75% of our team be high school kids who so are always developing younger. We're always, who's going to be the next Matt Salpeck? Who's going to be the next, uh, you know, Brett Gabbert? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the next Reed Holsky? Yeah. Who's going to be the next Kenny Javon? You know, we have kids that, and they're, they're great players in our program. Um, but if you just go the transfer route, you're never going to have those young kids that you're developing. Right. And you're never going to have kids playing for your university. You're just going to have hired guns is what you right. end up having. So, um, it is, there is a balance and I don't know that it's possible to hit the mark every year. There's, there, it's going to be more turbulent than it's ever been as far as programs that yeah. you're going to have some, there's going to be some dips when the portal wasn't kind of you, where you lost more than you got. There's going to be some years that maybe you got more than you lost and then it's a boon that the, the, yeah. the portal. So, um, it's year to year, it's day to day, it's minute by minute now in college football. So, um, unrestricted free agency all year round is a tough <laughs> thing to deal with, but um 
again, same rules for everybody, so you just yeah, keep plugging you away. Yeah, just keep plugging away. Let's continue our talk about the signees that signed their national letter of intent to come to Miami University this fall or this spring in some cases. And well, let's talk about the linebacking core. And uh, from Archbishop Hoban High School, another great program, Akron, Ohio, 6'1", 230-pound Devin Bell. Yeah, so Coach Tyrell at Akron, you know, Salopec won four state titles at Akron Hoban. They played in a state championship game again this year. Devin Bell, uh, amazing year. He had 83 tackles as a defensive end, wow. outside backer type kid. He's really can do both. He can play stand up. He can play with his hand on his ground. He had 36 tackles for loss in one season. That that's unheard of. I mean, that's Josh Ringer running back numbers. He had 19 and a half sacks this year in one season. Not in a career. If you have 19 and a half sacks in a high school career, that's that's probably school record. Yeah. He did it in one season on a great, great football team. And again, just like all the team captain, two-time team captain, plays in the best program in the state of Ohio, and played in so many big games, knows what it takes, plays, plays in a program that's important and they're well coached. Just all, not all, but a lot of these kids coming from the pro is a huge benefit. The success we have, we owe it to the families, we owe it to the talents of the kids, we owe it to the high school programs they come from. We, we get we got all these kids from Carmel and Indiana and we get you know they're more ready to help us play it just you know just the way it is so tremendous career tremendous season tremendous young man from a great family and and couldn't be any more excited that Devin's going to come and, and he's going to not an early enrollee but he's another kid I think yeah. can come and compete right away and that's Devin Bell Akron Ohio linebacker uh, coming to Miami in the fall and uh, South Carolina Aiken South Carolina is the home of uh, a linebacker six foot 225 pound Jaden Fuller. Yeah, one of the strongest human beings I've ever been around. Mm. Um, his family is probably the strongest. Mom, dad, and him can set records in the weight room. Uh, it's amazing what, how strong that whole family is. Uh, awesome football player, off the ball, linebacker, run and hit kid, great blitzer. Uh, just played in the South Carolina Georgia All Star game and they, they had too many linebackers, so they put him at the end and he dominated at the end. They wow. couldn't block him. Um, his lifting numbers are off the charts. Um, he can he can run. He can hit. He had 140 tackles, 25 tackles for loss, seven sacks, three forced fumbles. He he also had seven touchdowns on offense. And he doesn't look like an offensive guy, but he's he's a sneaky great athlete for a guy that's as big and strong and physical as he is. Um, he will make an immediate impact somewhere at least on ST because of his strength and size and his ability to run. Um, great kid, awesome program, awesome family. Um, plays sidelines to sidelines. Um, his lift, you know, he's you know well over 1,200, 13, 1,400 pounds in the major lifts. It's, mm. it's again, mm. it's not somebody you want to get on your wrong side. No, not at all. He owns a school record with 371 career tackles, and as uh, coach said, seven defensive touchdowns scored for Jaden Fuller. Aiken, South Carolina, and Silver Bluff High School is where Jaden attends. And uh, another tight end, or excuse me, another linebacker, early enrollee here, uh, Davison, Michigan, the Davison High School, 6'1", 210 pound, Carter Harriman. Yeah, Davison is one of the toughest programs in the state of Michigan. They're not, they're kind of a little bit um, off the beaten path or not in a, you know, in Detroit or major suburb of Detroit. Carter's been one of the best players on one of the best team. He also plays some offense in short yardage, which he loves, but he will, he's the quintessential Mike linebacker. He will read it as you see, he will run, he will stuff blockers, he will knock the knock back tackler, knock back blocker, leader, smart, everything you're looking for uh, in, in, in a linebacker here at Miami, really a linebacker anywhere. So we are very excited to get him. We always talk about Michigan, even though we have great ties to Michigan. Yeah. It's just tough. You got three really good schools in the state of Michigan. Our league, you got Toledo and Bowling Green. Kids got to pass over a lot of Mac schools to choose Miami. Um, but we were we were very happy. Um, Coach Bowen did a great job recruiting Carter um, with Coach White and Coach Welsh's help. And you can just see he, he's a sideline and sideline player. He is so instinctual, and the things you can't coach in the box, he's really good at. Yeah, indeed. And uh, own school records for career ta tackles and the 60 meter dash. So he's got some speed to go with that. Early enro enrollee, he'll be here in January. That's Carter Harriman. And one other linebacker in this class, Covington, Kentucky, just across the river, Dixie Heights High School. Linebacker 6'3", 230 pound, Brock Rice. Yeah, first team All-State kid. Had 184 tackles this year. 
um, versatility. He's blocked kicks for touchdowns. He is big, long, looks like a defensive end playing linebacker. I think he can do some tie wise where you hone in on his pass rush skills. He had 28 tackles in one game this year. Here's a block punt for a touchdown that he scooped and scored. He just had an incredible, incredible season. Um, he is he is going to provide great energy. Here's another block kick. Yeah. So coming off the year we had, <laughs> Coach Bernowski adding this guy to our block kick fest. Uh, uh, he's another guy that can do it and, and likes to do it, has a knack to do it. So great kid, great family, outstanding program. Uh, plays his heart out every week, loves to play. Um, infectious personality. He will bring energy. He will make those around him better with his energy on a daily basis. I would say if you're not having a great day, call Brock, talk to Brock for about five seconds and your day is going to be better. Um, so his length, his size, his explosive, it's just hard to get. When I first got to Mac, this kid wasn't available for us. Right. You know, one, because we weren't very good, two, because everybody took all the good high school kids. Right. And now this, this class is filled with kids that you're like, five years ago, we couldn't recruit this kid. And now we're getting them and they're all part of one class. And um, we're, we're, we're taking advantage of some guys just trying to go quick fix all the time. And we're going to tap into guys that are 6'3", 230, that can run like the wind and run and hit. So yeah. um, hopefully it'd be like a, a Dusty Cohen's type. Oh, yeah. Know, yeah. Trying okay. to bring up a name from the past. I don't there even know go. him. I'd like to meet him someday. Oh, but yeah. I, I coached against him, and I just knew, like, Dusty the Cohen, dude, yeah. dude was unblockable. Yeah, so. you, you, it, it was difficult to stop him, as a matter of fact. That's the linebackers in this year's class. We'll get to the defensive line here in just a moment as we talk about the 2023 Miami football National Signing Day class. We'll continue that discussion in just one moment. Miami men's basketball returns to the Millette Hall Hardwood this Friday at 1 o'clock as they host the Catamounts of Vermont. It's Kids Day Out with Miami basketball. For only $11, you get one adult ticket and two youth tickets. The kids are off school, looking for stuff to do. Make sure you head to Millette Hall this Friday at 1 o'clock for Kids Day Out with Miami Basketball versus Vermont. And remember to follow Miami Men's Basketball everywhere. Simply use the TuneIn app to hear every Miami Men's Basketball game from the Miami Sports Network. The 2023 Miami Football Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And now, more of the show. Glad to have you with us here on this Wednesday, uh, four days before uh, Christmas arrives here in Southwest Ohio and around the country. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like Christmas Day for the Miami football team. You get your signees. Uh, for the signees themselves, they find out, uh, you know, they're going to commit to a, a university and continue their career. Uh, Coach, just looking over the, the 21 names on this class and where they're from, uh, Pennsylvania to Tennessee to Georgia to Michigan, Indiana, Alabama, Canada a little bit later on. Uh, you guys uh, really get around and uh, have a chance to look at some guys. Yeah, no, obviously, if you look at our roster, we always say 85% of rosters within five hours of Oxford, right. Ohio, and that's our bread and butter is the Midwest. And we, we, we always recruit the Midwest first and foremost and give those kids the first offers and give them the most time to commit to Miami. And then as spring recruiting goes, we start to expand and our kids, our coaches are incredibly thorough and we'll find kids everywhere, you know, yeah. and find, like you said, Alabama and South Carolina and Georgia and Ontario, Canada, and you name it, we'll, we'll you know, Akron Hoban and Cincinnati Elder, it doesn't matter us. We're looking at, you know, well, we got to get local kids. No, we got to get kids that want to buy in a graduating champs and want to buy in a love and honor. We want to get kids that have super talented football kids that grew up in households that actually had some accountability, uh, that yeah. they, they weren't just told they were right all the time, that, that were going to come and listen to some good coaches and then going to compete their tails off for Miami football. And yeah. they get it, whether it's, whether it's Cincinnati Elder 25 minutes down the road or whether it's Ontario, Canada, if, if that has that personality traits, we're looking for that kid to add to Miami University. Yeah. And our, our assistant coaches just do um, they countless, countless hours. You know, they're on vacation after everybody signed this morning. And I'm like, you guys can get out of here. And they're all watching recruiting. Watching tape. recruiting. You know, I'm like, you guys yeah. can get out of here. Like, <laughs> time to go, guys. Like, you don't get many yeah. breaks. So um, they did get out of here. But uh, they're just tireless workers. And we'll, we'll find the right Miami kid anywhere. We don't care where you come from, what you look like. 
if you're if you're going to fit into what Miami University is all about, we want to bring you here. You know, that's that's a very specific look when you when, when you're when you're talking about it, uh, not only athletic wise, but also fit wise at Miami University. And and these days where everything is on the Internet, everything is emailable, that sort of stuff. I would imagine you get just inundated with videos and everything else from players from around the country. It all has to start there. But, but the process of narrowing that down, finding out about each athlete when there's thousands of them out there that want to play at this level, uh, to narrow it down, what a, what a Herculean task. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a zillion hours. It's nonstop. Yeah. It's 365 days a year. We have what they call dead periods. We're in a dead period now, which means you can't visit any high school kids and they can't visit you. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're not recruiting. We're, we're, we're recruiting, yeah. like I said. So, um, Starts with talent, like we always say. If you don't have the talent, it does, like I, I got buddies. Uh, he's the greatest. Uh, that's fine. He's the greatest kid. I need somebody that can cover somebody. I need somebody that can run, and hit, and make plays. So it starts with talent. Once it's talent, then for us, we don't chase talent. We always say that. If, here's the pool of kids at each position that can do the jobs we need to do. Then it's get to know them. What do they really like? And we always we talked about it again yesterday. Like, who are the kids that play for us? Who are the mm -hmm. kids that fit in at Miami? Who are the academic kids? Who are the social kids? Who are the kids that flourish in this environment? Who are the kids that flourish? Like, and I say, we do all the fancy stuff with the social media and all the pictures. And, they, and I'm just right. telling you, like, right. my best players don't give a rat's you know what mm -hmm. about the picture right? or the fancy cars. Those kids that want, are all into that, they usually go someplace else. They usually, right. kids that come here want to get one of the best degrees in the country, mm -hmm. want to have a great life when their football days are over, but they also want to compete for champions, championships, and they want to go play in the NFL. That's yeah. what we're looking for. So the Matt Salpix world doesn't care about the photo shoot. Right. He doesn't care about the accolades. He cares about getting a Miami degree as multiple Miami degrees and, and having a great life after football. Uh, Austin Earl R has a job. Oh, lined he has up. a job. Yeah. All these guys, a lot of these seniors already have jobs lined up and good jobs lined up. And that's why they came to Miami. All right. Yeah. And then they have a championship and some of them have multiple championships now. And some of these kids are going on to play on Sundays. And that's, that's what we're looking for. And all the, like you said, all the social media stuff, it's fun. We do it. Our, our recruiting and marketing people do a wonderful job. We do as good a job as anyone as, as far as cool marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. But not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what kid from what family. I want to find another Austin Ertl. Yep, there Under, we go. Under-recruited kid from the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin that raised an old school family. He's a tough you-know-what. Yeah. And he's a smart you-know-what. And he'll compete in the classroom. He'll compete on the field, and he'll treat you, treat you like a great human being. And you find that kid, and it's like, well, he was not highly recruited. No, he wasn't. But he was perfect for us, perfect. and he was perfect yeah. for Miami University. Played from his first snap on campus at Iowa and just finished up his career at Miami University. And maybe one of these guys will be the next Austin Earl defensive line. And we go across the border on the north side, Scarborough, Ontario. Providence Christian Academy, 6'2", 290-pound defensive lineman, O.J. Alexander. Yeah, O.J.'s a big human being. He's already, we just had him in for his official visit. He was 302 pounds last weekend. He does not look 302. He is raw. Um, him and Coach Brown together will be a very powerful combination. Coach Brown is one of the best teachers of D-line play, not only run game techniques, but pass rush techniques and understanding of the game. He is a very twitchy, violent guy, um, had, had 20... 25 tackles, seven sacks, and four forced fumbles. He was Region 8 Defense Lineman of the Year. Um, just, just an explosive, young, physical kid that's super, super smart. He's a great, great student. And, um, you know, with Tony Collier moving on and Ertl moving on, we have a hole at that inside defense line position. We're hoping he can get in the mix as a young player. 25 tackles for loss, seven sacks, four forced fumbles this year for O.J. Alexander, Region 8 Defensive Lineman of the Year out of Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. And you take a look at some of the work there. Up next, Westfield, Indiana, Westfield High School, 6'1", 260-pound defensive lineman, William Goodvine III. Yeah, we talk about how Indianapolis has been so good to us from, from our first ever recruiting class with the Nate Beckers of the world yeah. um, right on through. Westfield, one of the top programs, Coach Gilbert, one of the top coaches. Uh, William, another captain, uh, he was Defense Alignment of the Year in the state of Indiana this year. Um, tremendous student, tremendous person, tremendous family, and again, another program that's run just like a college program. You're going to get a kid that's going to come in here, he's going to listen, he's going to do things the right way, he's going to be coachable, he's going to be hardworking. Um, 
We've tapped into so many good players from the state of Indiana, and particularly the Indianapolis area. And here's another great program that we've been able to tap into. Um, and uh, again, Williams, everything, everything we're looking for is a person, a player, a competitor, a student, um, and had, has had a great, great career there. Um, 40 tackles and nine tackles for loss as a junior. Yeah. Uh, or no, no, that was that's OJ stats. He has, yeah, he has, he has yeah. even more stats. All state as a junior, 48 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, and two and a half sacks. And then comes back with 13 tackles for loss and four more sacks this year. So uh, think he can play inside, think he can play outside, think he can play on the edge. Um, again, great player from a great program, and it's a great high school, and we're excited to get anytime we get a kid from Westfield. And we will take a look at the uh, defensive backs when we come back in just one moment. We invite you to stay with us as we continue the 2023 National Signing Day Special. We are Kemba. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our passion is to fuel your dreams for today and tomorrow. A loan for your car or first home. Financial support to grow your small business saving for life's big moments insights to help you plan for a brighter financial future kimba your trusted next door financial partner learn more at kimba.com that's k-e-m-b-a dot com the 2023 miami football signing day special is brought to you by kimba credit union kimba your trusted next door financial partner and now more of the show and happy to have you back here with us as we continue our discussion. Five more athletes to go here in the 2021 class, 2023 class of uh, signees. And uh, they will join the Mid-American Conference champion, Miami Red Hawks, either in the uh, spring or in the fall. We still have another early enrollee that we'll get to in this segment where we're talking about the defensive backs. And uh, this is this is an area, you know, you mentioned uh, Rayon Strader came in as a true freshman, immensely uh, talented, learned a lot in the early part of the season, did great. Uh, uh, Frizz uh, McKee uh, has declared for uh, the NFL draft and he will be gone. But uh, this this is a, an area where you could use some depth to start with, I think. Yeah, and there's a little confusion because people have asked me about Frizz declaring for draft. Frizz is out of eligibility. Hey, he's out of, uh, yeah. So uh -huh. everyone's yeah. like, Frizz had another year. I go, Frizz did not have another year. So he declared for the draft because his playing days in college are over. But Frizz, we appreciate everything, oh. everything that kid did for us as a leader, as a player. Uh, but there's a big hole to fill because he yeah. made a ton of plays the last two years for the Miami Redhawks. Uh, so uh, the defensive back group is, is coming in as a talented group. Uh, we're excited about these young guys. Um, the, the first person we're going to talk about is Tony Coleman. Yeah. Um, and he's a very talented young man, kind of has some Quentin Rollins background because yes. he's, he's a he's really a basketball player that is turning into a football player. Wow. Uh, and is if you he has some very good football highlights, uh, as you're going to see right here. But he's played very little football in his life and he's been mm -hmm. playing basketball at a really high level for a long time. He's a crazy explosive athlete. Um, if I showed you his basketball clips, they are they are insane. They're huh. Reggie Virgil like as far as dunking ability. Um, and he's got, like I said, he doesn't have NBA basketball talents, although he probably thought he did most time growing up because he's a great <laughs> hooper. Um, he had 17 last night with four threes and a couple dunks. Um, but he has all the raw materials to be an NFL corner. And he really trusts Coach Blanton and Coach Breakin that can develop him. Um, but He's six foot two, 190 right now, and probably close to 40 inch vertical, and oh. everything everything you'd ever want an athlete. And he's a kind of a raw piece of clay. Has played football uh, at a high level just because he's instinctual, really good athlete. Um, he would tell you, I don't know a ton about football, and uh, but he, him and Coach Blant will be a really powerful duo. So we're really excited to have Tony. He's he's I don't know of all the great athletes in the class, he might be the best athlete of them all. Mm. Um, just from explosive and length. And I said, I said, I don't know if you're going to be an NFL corner in four years. You're going to look like an NFL yeah. corner probably in about a year and a half. So um, we get him in our weight room and get him with Luke and Brandon and then get him in our program. Uh, he, he's got a chance to be a special one. Yeah, it's Tony Coleman Jr., 6'2", 185 pounder out of Eufaula, Alabama, uh, coming to uh, Miami University this fall. Up next from Chardon, Ohio, in Chardon High School, 6'3". 210-pound defensive back, Leo Columbi. 
Yeah, first team all state, um, leader, captain, quarterback of the defense, makes all the checks, uh, really long and rangy, can really run, uh, can make plays sideline to sideline, as you see right there, was first team all state, 83 tackles, 15 pass break of seven and a half tackles for loss, um, just all over the field. Uh, super competitive kid, super prideful kid. Um, we love his length and we love his athleticism. He's exactly what you're looking for in the safety position. Um, just being able to cover, cover ground, make plays in the run game, but also make plays when the ball's in the air, um, which he's done throughout his whole career. So uh, again, just a really, really gifted athlete for how long he is. Probably five years ago, we're getting the same kid that's not six foot two, six foot three. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting that five eleven, six foot kid. Now we're getting these longer kids that can really run and play the game, um, and, and really look like power five athletes, and, and they are. So, uh, very excited about Leo. Great program, great coach, great family. Uh, very, very competitive outfit, and uh, we're excited to get Leo here shortly. Yeah, absolutely. Eighty-three tackles, fifteen pass breakups, seven and a half tackles for loss, and an interception just this season for Leo Columbi. And we head over to Pennsylvania. Butler Senior High School is the home for 6'2", 175-pounder Braylon Littlejohn. Yeah, Braylon's an all-round athlete. Again, another tremendous hooper. He promised me he's going to drop 30 tonight on his rival, <laughs> uh, which he probably will. Um, versatile player, senior year, and didn't play a lot of defense, even though his junior is DB. They just, in high school, you got to do what you got to do, and you put your best player, and he played quarterback. He was playing wide out and then they moved to quarterback and then the team started to click with him at quarterback even though he's really not a natural quarterback he's just a natural athlete um and uh so he basically had a great senior year playing quarterback even though that's not really what he is he's, mm -hmm. he's really a db and really wide out would be his next position um but very versatile athlete tremendous tremendous basketball player has some frizz in him just natural instincts around you put a ball in that kid's hand right probably, to probably put a golf club in his hand he'd be good at it just everything is instinctual for Braylon uh, great kid from a great family team captain again they're all team captains and um, had a really good senior year playing at a position he's not gonna ever play in Miami <laughs> <laughs> let's go down to Tennessee Cleveland Tennessee and Bradley Central High School 6 270 pound Caleb Martin yeah, Caleb is, he's special. He's just long and athletic and he can do, he can do even more than I thought he could do on a football field because I knew he could play receiver. I knew he's a great DB. He'll run and hitch. He's got great, great ball skills. He's a tremendous basketball player, extremely skilled basketball player. And then this year, you know, he played some quarterback a little bit through his career, more of a wildcat. And then this year they moved him to quarterback. And like, I just thought he'd be this run around guy. He threw for 2,600 <laughs> yards and 31 touchdowns. I'm like, he's a DB wide out. Like he's not a quarterback. He's right. just so gifted. Um, and then he runs for 958 yards, another 20, 20 touchdowns. So they, they basically move him to quarterback and he has 51 touchdowns. Like he's a natural quarterback. And all these highlights are in the secondary because we've recruited him as a DB. I think he's got a chance to come in and compete for a spot right away. He's got just insane ball skills, insane instincts. He's so confident, he's so quiet and humble. He just, he carries it a lot like Frizz. He carries himself just as a guy. He don't, don't right. need to tell you how great he is. Let's just go play and find out who's the best guy. Yeah. And uh, just, just very excited about Caleb and his length. Again, a very long athletic dude that's so versatile. He's gonna be all state in, the, in Tennessee when they come out with the all state teams. Yeah. But had, had 3,600 yards as a quarterback and 51 touchdowns. And I'm telling you, that's his third best position. <laughs> like, you, you take him as a DB yeah, wide out and he was, He's going to be all-state quarterback. It's, it's just what that kid's accomplished is just kind of blew my mind this year. Two-time team captain, comes from a great program, and we're very excited about Caleb. All right, and our final enrollee that we'll talk about, an early enrollee, he'll be here in January, North Huntington, Pennsylvania, and Norwin High School, a 6'2", 185-pounder, Jackson Ponds. Yeah, Jackson, two-time captain. Um, just just does everything you want on a football field he can he can run and hit you but here you just watch him have a great interception here you see him run in the alley knock back tackler he's big and physical at 6'2, 190 right now he's going to be that 210 pound kid he's going to be a leader he's going to be a guy that calls out the defenses makes the checks um comes from a very competitive family um and in in part of kind of a rebuilding program, got new coaches in there. He believed in the new coaches. He fought for the new coaches. They really did a lot of good things this year. Um, 
but not the kid that complains about anything. He just goes out and does and leads and makes everybody around him better. And again, another sideline like Leo and, and, and like Carter at line, just uh, all our linebackers in this class, just sideline to sideline players and they love football and they love to run and hit. And um, obviously you see that on this tape here. And I love his instincts of staying inside out on the football. Um, we're su super excited. Obviously he's another early enrollee, so we get him this spring and a great student. and. Um, rounds out a, just a really, really, really gifted class. I think people know me well enough, like we're really excited about this class. I, yeah. I, we had official signing, official visit day, and I'm looking around the room and I'm like, we've had great classes. That's why we were 42 and 17 the max, right? right? I mean, right. We, but these kids are just bigger. Like it's the yeah. same type of kids in these bigger, longer, more explosive frames. And um, it, it could be the best class we've had here in 10 years. Yeah, uh, first team all uh, conference, 57 tackles, eight pass breakups, four interceptions, four blocked field goals for Jackson Ponds. And one of the things you touched on there with the, the, the DBs that we really haven't talked about, and I know you love getting guys that are two sport athletes, whether it's track, whether it's you know basketball, whatever it happens to be, you, you love getting those guys. Yeah, it's like to me, it's like we talk a lot, it's like, how many times are they in competitive arena? Like how many are they, and are they good at, if they're, especially if they're good at multiple sports, then it just, yeah. those kids almost always seem to pan out. But just the fact that they do two and three sports and they, and a lot of them, hey, it's, they're great at football and they're decent at the, but they love to go compete. They don't care, they just wanna go compete. And that's, that plays for the whole rest of your life. Those, that competitive instinct, that competitive gene, that willingness that when everyone else is taking their foot off the gas, I'm doing my football lifting and I'm playing basketball. I'm doing my football lifting and I'm running track or playing baseball or doing all three or wrestling. And so we love the multiple sport athletes. I think pretty much everyone, I don't think we're alone that way. I think all, yeah. all colleges love the multiple. I think there's a lot of statistics that have shown that those multiple sport athletes typically do better. Do better. Not mm -hmm. only on the field, but also in the classroom, just they're used to manage their time. They're used to doing more. And then college, we know in the classroom, you gotta do more, you know, on the football field, you gotta do more. So if you're already used to doing more than a lot of your other high school uh, competitors, that's, that's going to bode well when you get to college, and it's certainly going to bode well for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking with head coach Chuck Martin, the 2023 National Signing Day special. We'll come back one more time here in our Yeager Stadium studio after this. Stay with us. Miami men's basketball returns to the Millette Hall Hardwood this Friday at 1 o'clock as they host the Catamounts of Vermont. It's Kids Day Out with Miami Basketball. For only $11, you get one adult ticket and two youth tickets. The kids are off school, looking for stuff to do. Make sure you head to Millette Hall this Friday at 1 o'clock for Kids Day Out with Miami Basketball versus Vermont. And remember to follow Miami men's basketball everywhere. Simply use the TuneIn app to hear every Miami men's basketball game from the Miami Sports Network. We are Kemba. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our passion is to fuel your dreams for today and tomorrow. A loan for your car or first home. Financial support to grow your small business. Saving for life's big moments insights to help you plan for a brighter financial future. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. Learn more at Kimba.com. That's K-E-M-B-A dot The 2023 Miami Football Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And now, more of the show. And as always, we want to thank our sponsors in Kimba Credit Union. Uh, they've been a longtime sponsor with Miami Athletics and have always brought you this uh, signing day special, and uh, we appreciate it. 21 names added, adding to the roster for the 24 Miami uh, Red Hawk football team. And uh, Coach, uh, I've been here a long time. I've seen programs built. I've seen you know quick fixes. I've seen it all. And your 10th year here, and you know when I look back at it, you know from a fan's perspective, and, and see all of the changes that have made, uh, been made by you, your staff, David Saylor, the physical changes uh, to the program in the new locker room, the APC, and uh, you know the the Gunlock Center, uh, but also as you you alluded to, the changes in the athletes and the athletes that we're able to get now because we took the time to build the program and build it from the ground up and get going. 
Yeah, and again, a lot of recruiting is your own players within your program helping recruit and how yeah. how do they feel about the program and how do they how do their families feel about because word of mouth is so powerful. So there's a lot of crowd when you recruit a kid from Cincinnati or Columbus or Indianapolis or Cleveland. There's we have players on the team in that area and they're right. calling the parents like, hey, your son plays at Miami. Mm -hmm. Your son goes to school at Miami. What's his experience been like? And when the parents then rave like we wouldn't have traded the experience at Miami University as a student, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't trade our experience for our son within Coach Martin's football program or playing for Coach Freakin or playing for, like, then that goes well beyond anything you can do in recruiting. And then they come on campus and talk to our players about, and our players love playing here, and our players love their teammates, and they love the coaches, and they love the community, and they love being in Oxford, and they love the, the social and academic opportunities. So it, that's all part of it, and again, we said we got here, we're gonna build it to last. It may take us a little time. It took us two and a half years to kind of get this thing going in the right direction. Um, and I said, we're a half a game ahead of Toledo. We're, we're 25 games over 500 the last yeah. seven years and they're 24 games over 500. So that last victory yeah. gave us bragging Helped rights. Helped a lot, yeah. Bragging <laughs> right for, you know, and then OU's, you know, about four or so games behind us and that's, and then no one else is even close when you talk about the, the top programs yeah. in the league over and that was the goal is to be a team that okay next fall are we gonna win the MAC championship in, in, in next season I don't know if that's gonna happen not, but we're gonna be a team that everybody believes we can and every yeah. single year we're a team that everybody believes and that's what we're trying to build that consistent winner that can fight for MAC titles year in year out and then when when you have things kind of go a little bit your way you like we did this year like we did 19 um, like I said it's it's been a great run because we got it done 19, 20. Obviously, we played three games. We're two and one COVID right. year. That was kind of a waste of year for Miami football. Is, um, 21, we come back and we're a two point play away from being back in Detroit. And we're right. still very disappointed we didn't make that two point play because, mm -hmm. and then, you know, 22, we didn't have as good a year. We had, you know, a little quarterback situation. We went six and six, and then we're back to winning it. So if you make a two point play in 2021, we're in Detroit <coughs> three of the last four years that we could have been there. And that's, that's pretty remarkable when you look at, you know, over my 10 years, Toledo has two titles and we have two titles. We're the only team on the MAC East that has a title. Now I know right. they're getting rid of the MAC East, yep. and maybe that's part of the reason why. Is, but when we've got to Detroit, we've we found a way to get it done. So yeah. um, we're, we're very prideful in the fact that we built a program and it's sustainable. And yes, it's not going to be perfect every year, especially right. in this crazy league. The, the oh, margin, yeah. Yeah. you know. Ball State was a bad team and they almost beat us the last game. They're not a bad team. They just have lost a bunch of close games. And right. that's, so the margin here and, but we have something we're gonna be, like I said, we're hard to beat every week when we get in a max play. Yeah, and, and you're building on the momentum of, 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 a, of an incredible season. 11 and three, uh, you get the championship uh, and all of, the, all of the other accolades that we talked about, a Lou Groza award, uh, you know, and you, that really gives you something to, to build from. It helps, obviously, a great deal in recruiting, but uh, you know you want to you want to build that fan base as well. And the the amount of notoriety that the team has gotten, national TV, local television, you know, and around, yeah. Hopefully, it translates into bodies in the seats next year. Yeah. No, we'd like to. And again, we had an incredible crowd at Ford Field. Yeah. And it was no one thought that Toledo wouldn't have the majority of the fans, and yeah. they didn't. It was Miami, electric. Miami yeah. Group came and there was more Miami people and they were much louder and it was it was and the whole atmosphere was wonderful and then two also just we we've done a lot and we've built a lot you've talked about what David Saylor's done with the Gunlock Center and the Dalk Indoor Sports Center and what he's done all over campus with yeah. all the mm -hmm. but as college continues to change and and you know there's going to be some opportunities that we have to take advantage of now we have some great players um, that you know, a lot of people are trying to buy away from us. We have to come up with, we have to get going. Like a lot of old school people, I'm not into this NIL. Well, if you want, if forget you what you're players, into, just yeah. are you into Miami football? Yeah. If you're into Miami football, now's the time. So there's going to be, we're going to be really reaching out to a, a cross section, not only football alums, but all alums that, hey, we're going to put some things together uh, this off season to help. And again, I'm not 100% for it. You know, right. Like, exactly. It's not. I, I, it's not yeah. a personal opinion. It's do you want to help Miami football be successful, sustain? We built this thing. We're going to need more help now than we've ever had from from alums, from football alums. We're going to put the vehicles in place to make it easy yeah. to to support and help us help us. We're recruiting all these good players now. How do you keep them? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, well, it's harder to keep them now more than ever. John Saunders had a really good year in Mississippi. You know, so mm -hmm. it's 
that's the reality. If you can like it or not like it, just like Miami football and help support and us. Help so support it. Yeah. When we reach out for you and say this is what our needs are, it's not my personal needs. This is what we need to keep this thing going at a very high level and even build on it and take it to the next level. You know, we already talked about the goal next year, you know, there's going to be a non-power five in the big dance. There's 12 teams yeah. going. There's no longer a four-team playoff. It's a 12-team playoff. And there's going to be one non-power five team get there. We have this great nucleus coming back. If we could keep them intact, which we've done so far, yeah. um, we could use some support to, to make it even easier to keep these kids from, from leaving us. Um, but we want to be the 12th seed next year. We yeah. would have been third in line this year. We wouldn't have been the 12th seed. But yeah. when the final poll after we beat Toledo, we were the third. So we're right there knocking on the door with a great nucleus coming back. Um, you know, we don't we have probably not the schedule in place to be that team next year. We right. probably have a little daunting schedule, but yeah. um, our kids will probably figure out a way to manage that. Yeah, indeed. And uh, speaking of the schedule, the Mid-American Conference did make a change in the way that they schedule games. They eliminated the East and West Division and uh, basically you have uh, uh, three team pods, if you will, that will play every year uh, for Miami. That's Ohio and Ball State. And, uh, and that's created a lot of confusion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Basically, what's happened, we're a 12 team league now. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be like the Big it's, Ten. Yeah, it's exactly. a 12 team league. Yes, there are these three. We're going to play OU and Ball State every year. They're, yeah. they're protecting rivalries. Toledo's going to play Bowling Green. Eastern, Western, and Central are going to always play because you each have other. all these long stand, which is very smart of the league. But don't, we're not in four, it's three not team a divisions. Pod. No, right? no, right. So it's just, I've had so many questions about that because the, the initial right. press release that came out talked about that, yeah. which I understood, but when you're reading it, it was a little bit confusing. Yeah. So it's a 12 team league that two teams with the best record will play in the MAC Championship game. Yeah. So there's no East versus West. It's, it's, there's a lot of positives to it. There's never, there's always, the, sure? the negative is, if you're tied, you may not have played the team you're tied with, and now it's going to be a flip yeah, of a, a flip coin, of a coin, a coin or something. Like it won't. Yeah. Where with the East and West, it was decided on the field. The team yeah. that won the East typically, if there was two teams tied, they played each other, so there was you just went to head head. It right. was pretty right. easy. Um, now you could get in. I know was it the Mount West or WAC or what? I don't know some program out. They had three teams tied, and they went to computer some computer form and decided they got to play a championship game. Mm -hmm. Which, again, there's nothing perfect in this world, but. Um, it, it'll make it, I think, even more exciting. You have 12 teams battle, and the top two get to go to Detroit, and we're going to be one of those teams fighting to try to get to Detroit. Well, and one of the things it does eliminate is the fact that you don't play a team for 12 years, and then you have to play them two times in four weeks, yeah, as it would happen with Toledo, but it worked out pretty well for us, Coach. Uh, I, as always, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to sit down and talk with us, and uh, I know the uh, fans and parents of all of our end, uh, Rollies uh, appreciate it too, and uh, this is uh, you know just watching the film here with you today. Uh, uh, some of the more talented, as you said, size-wise, length-wise, speed-wise, guys that uh, I've seen in a while here. At yeah, no, we're we're definitely excited about this group, and we're proud of the. Again, we didn't win the MAC championship without being good at recruiting. That the players win games, coaches don't win games, recruiting wins games, and. Um, Everybody that supports us in recruiting, uh, our, our recruiting staff led by Cody Keller does an amazing job and our assistants are tireless workers and we have student workers that help us. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a full on, full on effort. Uh, Andrew Wade, our video guy who puts out all this stuff for us yeah. that helps so much in recruiting. Um, it, it's been a total team effort, but this class is as good as any class we've had. We really feel that way. Well, Coach, again, thank you so much for everything you've done for us all season long. It's always a pleasure. And uh, for your staff as well, uh, thank them. And uh, thank you for watching here this afternoon. Uh, tune in on, on MiamiRedHawks.com. It'll be a separate stream at, four, at 1245 this afternoon. And uh, that's uh, just about an hour and 20 minutes from now. At 1245 this afternoon, Coach will have his press conference meet with the media and discuss the 2023 signing class uh, a little bit more. And uh, again, you can find that stream on MiamiRedHawks.com. Thank you to Kimba Credit Union for being our sponsor and thank you for watching the 2023 Miami Football National Signing Day Special. Love and honor everyone. This has been the 2023 Miami Football National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special. Presented by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner.
Come back to MiamiRedHawks.com at 1245 this afternoon for Miami head coach Chuck Martin's signing day press conference.